Craig here from North 49. And with treating BPPV, do you often find a challenge treating the lateral canal? Or have you ever wondered why when you lay a patient back into the Dix Hall Pike position, they're more symptomatic and you see more nystagmus than when you sit them up? Well, if that's the case, this video is for you. In this video, we'll review Ewald's three laws that will help us treat the more challenging or atypical forms of BPPV. So before we get into the three laws, let's just review some vestibular physiology. Remembering that the vestibular nerve in both ears, when you're not moving, fire between 80 to 100 spikes per second. Now in the lateral canal, when the cupola deflects, when you move and it deflects away from the canal, that'll increase the firing rate in the vestibular nerve of that ear. And when it deflects inward toward the canal, that'll decrease the firing rate of the vestibular nerve in that ear. Whereas the opposite holds true for the anterior and the posterior canal, when the canal deflects towards the canal or inward toward the canal, that'll increase the firing rate. And when it deflects away from the canal, that'll decrease the firing rate of the vestibular nerve in that ear. And don't worry, we'll write this all down in the video notes. Now moving on to Ewald's three laws, the first law states that the direction of the stagmus will be in the same plane as the canal that's involved. So if it's the lateral canal, it'll be lateral, horizontal, <laughs> lateral, nystagmus. If it's the posterior canal, it'll be upbeat, torsional. And if it's the anterior canal, it'll be downbeat, torsional. The clinical relevance of this is when you see positional nystagmus, say with the dix hall pike test, you need to know, is it BPPV, and if so, which canal to treat, or is it indicative of some central involvement? So say you put someone back in the right Dix Hall Pike position, you may see upbeat right torsional nystagmus, so then you treat the posterior canal. If you see lateral nystagmus, that would lead you to treat the lateral canal. If you see downbeat torsional nystagmus, you're obviously going to treat the anterior canal. And then if you see pure vertical or torsional nystagmus, you're thinking it's probably not the BPPV and it could be indicative of some central involvement. All right, so again, Ewald's law number one is the nystagmus will be in the same plane as the canal that's involved. Ewald's second law states that deflection of the cupula away from the canal creates a greater response than when the, def the cupula deflects towards the canal in the lateral or horizontal canal. So clinical relevance or what happens, first of all, I'm sure we'll take an anatomical model here. This is an anatomical model of the right inner ear. This is the front and the back of the person's head. This is the posterior, the lateral, and the anterior canal. And if the lateral canal is involved, remember this is the top, this is where the nose is, this is the back of the head. When the person is, say, laying on their back, uh, majority of the time, actually, with BPV affecting the lateral canal, about 75% of the time, the canal or the otoconia are in the posterior arm. So this is the posterior arm. This is the anterior arm. And right here is where the cupola would sit. So that membrane here and the opening of the canal is down here. So we got to get those crystals moving this way, all right, out of the canal. So the majority of the time, they're just sitting in the posterior arm. So if this person has BPPV affecting the right lateral canal, when they turn their head to the right, the crystals are going to move to the most dependent position. That's going to push the endolymph up and push the cupula away from the canal. And that's going to create a greater response than when the person rolls onto their left shoulder and that pulls the cupula into or towards the canal. So that's why with BPV affecting the lateral canal, if it's unsustained geotropic nystagmus, typically the side is worse is the side that's most provocative. All right. And then the opposite holds true with if it's cupulothiasis or canalothiasis affecting the anterior arm. Say it's canalothiasis affecting the anterior arm, the crystals are here. This is the right ear. If they tilt onto the right side, the crystals are going to go this way, pull the cupula towards the canal. It'll create nystagmus and it'll be away uh, from the affected side. But it won't be as intense as when they 
roll onto their left side and the crystals move this way and cause the cupola to deflect away from the canal. All right, that, and that holds true with cupola thysis, just with the weight of the cupola hanging, um, the weight of the um, autocornia on the cupola. When you roll to the right, it deflects towards the canal. And when you roll to the left, it'll deflect away from the canal and creating a greater response when they turn to the left than the right. So we know that actually it's probably the right ear that we need to treat in that case when it's sustained ageotropic nystagmus. So that's the clinical relevance with Ewald's law number two, that the deflection of the cupola away from the canal creates a greater response than when the, the cupola deflects towards the canal in the lateral canal. And then Ewald's third law is basically the opposite of the second one. So with the posterior and anterior, the posterior and anterior canal, when the cupola defects towards the canal, it creates a greater response, or it's more intense, than when the cupola defects away from the canal. And that's why, at clinical relevance, we see when we lay a person back into the Dick's Hall Pikes, this is the posterior canal, we got some loose autoconia there. When we lay them back into the Dick's Hall Pike position, the cupula defect to a more dependent position, pulling the cupula down and toward the canal, causing nystagmus. But when we sit them up, the autoconia is going to move back and deflect the cupula the other way but it's, and cause nystagmus, but it's not going to be as intense as when they lay back. So Ewald's third law states, that with the anterior and posterior canal, when the cupola deflects towards the canal, that creates a greater response than when it deflects away. So, hope you found this video informative and beneficial. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe, share it with your associates. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at North 49. And until our next video, take care.